Yes, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And we had another busy day yesterday. We had two official announcements made by the football club and some rumours as well that we've seen on various news websites and, and Twitter accounts and things like that. So we've got a lot to get into, so let's get into it. We'll start with the bad news, so then the good news can cheer you up a little bit, if if you don't already know, which I'm sure every single one of you do. Um, but it's official. Ariniet Mioric is no longer a Burnley player. He has now officially signed for Ipswich Town, obviously promoted last season into the Premier League. And I think that's the reason why he's left. I, I know I'm not going to get into the debate again because I've spoken about it a couple of times. We'll probably get into it more into an actual podcast with the lads, which I still need to arrange, but I'm hoping to do it this weekend. But I feel like because he missed out on having a full Premier League season or playing anywhere near enough Premier League games last season, I feel like he feels that he deserves the chance to play in the Premier League and I completely agree, I think he does. I feel like he should have been our number one last season but again, not going to get into it now. I've already said it enough times but yes, Burnley Football Club tweeted yesterday at around 12.30pm and that's telling, remember what? Remember 12.30pm. Um, but they said... We can confirm that goalkeeper Arianette Mioric has joined Ipswich Town for an undisclosed fee. The Kosovan joined the Clarets in the summer of 2022 and played 55 matches across his two seasons at Turf Moor. We would like to thank Arrow for his efforts. Then just to go on to the official town website, Ipswich Town website... Uh, just to give you some of the quotes that he said while joining Ipswich Town, he says, I'm excited to get joined, uh, sorry, I'm excited to have joined the club and I am looking forward to getting started. Um, I watched the, how the team played last season and feel the style will suit me very well, so this is the perfect move for me. I have had a good conversation with the manager and the head of goalkeeping and believe this is the right place for me to be as the club moves into the Premier League. I find it very telling that he said that again. That's obviously why he's gone, in my opinion. Um, I'm looking forward to getting started. So pretty generic stuff, really. Um, but I do like the fact that he's mentioned the Premier League. I say I like it. I, the fact that he's mentioned the Premier League to me tells me um, that that's that's why he's gone. Uh, he did put a nice little message out on Instagram, to be fair. I gave him a bit of stick recently for deleting all his Burnley posts and stuff, and a few people come back at me saying, you know, he did it ages ago. I still feel that that can be seen as disrespectful, whether he did it in January or 30 seconds before I saw it. And then he unfollowed all his teammates as well. It's just a weird, moody footballer move for me. It's like when you break up from your ex and you're in a mood because she's sleeping with your brother or something. I don't have a brother. That's why I said brother before anyone goes, hey, that's what happened to Turf Cast Joe. It didn't. I don't have a brother. Um, and then you just get angry, so you unfollow him all and everything. That's what it feels like he's doing to me when he does stuff like that. And every footballer. Um, but he put a nice message on Instagram. So I think he showed that he does respect the club and especially the fans. He said... On Instagram, to my Burnley fans, I will never forget what we achieved together. Championship winners 22-23 was a proud moment in my career that we will always share. I hope I brought you excitement and passion when I played for the Claret of Blue and I thank you for showing me love and support always. I hope we meet again soon up the Claret. So that's a nice touch. I did feel like he was being a bit moody and a bit mardy through the move, not coming back to Gawthorpe, for example. Again, I don't feel like it's the right move. However, I kind of respect the fact that he's, he's, he's not just parted ways and left it there. We'll be surprised to see if Trafford put the, uh, puts anything up when he leaves the football club, but I'm not going to for one second sit here and say I don't think he will because I think he probably will. Um, but, but we'll see. That one does feel a bit genuine. But yeah, it's official. Arinette Mioric is no longer a Burnley player. And I know I mentioned it the other day on the show, but it's interesting that the, the price has obviously been undisclosed by both clubs, but you're still getting people at The Athletic saying it's 8 million rising to 10, and you're still getting people at other places saying it's around 15 million. So a little bit way apart on the valuation, not the valuations, on, on the actual price on the reports, but it's 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 somewhere between a, f a full price by the sounds of it. It's somewhere between 10 and 15 million, which is quite a bit of a gap to be fair. But um, yeah, it is gone regardless of what the price is, it's gone. I guess we'll have to find out 
what the price is over the next few years in the club accounts. Um, and one more thing on this, Manchester City have a sell-on clause and according to reports, they have made £2.5 million off that. So we, we'll be giving wh whatever price we get, whatever profit we get, we'll be giving Manchester City £2.5 million pounds of that. But yeah, Ari Netmiorich is the first goalkeeper to leave the club and we can probably expect at least one more to be leaving the club as well. So now we've got the bad news out of the way, it's time for the good news. And I spoke on yesterday's show about the drama with the medical, whether it was on Monday or it had taken place on, on Tuesday, as I believe it was um, Andy Jones from The Athletic that tweeted that the, the medical had taken place on Tuesday, but then he ended up retweeting, saying, oh, on correction, it hasn't taken place, but we're still expecting it to get done. And I was saying... I think the medical's already been done by the sounds of it. Turns out the medical had already been done. So if you do watch us on Twitter, uh, follow us on Twitter, then I will not be retiring the GIF because the GIF was correct again. But I also said it feels like it might be announced on Wednesday and that's exactly what happened. So the football club announced that Muric was leaving at 12.30 and literally 30 minutes later, they announced that Andreas Untundre had signed from FC Kane, French side FC Kane, again for an undisclosed fee. So it's another official announcement. Um, Burnley Football Club tweeted, like I said, a, an actual good announcement video again. I felt like recent ones haven't been that good so far this season. I feel like we have built ourselves up into this club that makes these brilliant announcement videos. And I haven't really liked the last ones, but I did really like this one, the San Andreas one. Obviously, Andreas, Huntundri is San Andreas. Well, it was actually GTA... Um, yeah, but uh, I caned so many GTA San Andreas, but I caned so many hours into that game that I was probably always going to like that, to be fair. Um, but it was uh, a good announcement video and one that I really, really liked. But yeah, they tweeted, we are delighted to announce the signing of Andreas Huntundre on a four-year deal from French side Kane for an undisclosed fee. The forward joins the Clarets following a prolific campaign in League Two last season, which saw the 22-year-old score 16 goals. So it's this is my worry with Andreas, first name terms already, is he scored a, an okay amount of goals in a league that is very, very far below the standard of what the championship's going to be next season. So, But... He's unknown. I don't know much about him other than YouTube videos. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I do like some people do. And he looks okay on the YouTube videos, but I'd look okay on a YouTube video, to be fair. I could edit it very good to make me look okay. Um, but I trust this algorithm or whatever it is that the club use or the scouting system or however they've done it, because this is how they did it last time. We'd never heard of Benson. We'd never heard of Zorora. And they both turned out to have very big parts to play in our promotion campaign. So fingers crossed this lad can as well. But yeah, after moving to the club, he spoke to the official account, the official website, the official YouTube channel. And he said, I feel excited. I chose to come here because of the big interest shown from the club. It's a club that gives opportunities to young players. So this is one of the big reasons I chose to be here. And I love English football. I have spoken with the boss and it was quite a good discussion. We spoke about values, principles and the way we play. It was perfect for me. So that's interesting. He's already spoken to Scott Parker about how he's going to play. We know that Scott Parker relies heavily on strikers and, and strikers that chip in with a lot of goals. It's interesting that he's spoken with Andreas about this. So Andreas will have more, probably more idea than what we do at the minute about how we're going to set up under Scott Parker but yeah two official announcements made by the club yesterday one good news with Andreas coming in one bad news with Muric leaving but it's, I do find it interesting that the club announced Muric was leaving and then half an hour later they dropped this and obviously as we know our stuff works they've been, they've been sitting on this for a while it looks like he had his medical on Monday so the Nanoni were coming in I felt like that's very wise from the club to stop people kicking off and morning. oh, God sake, we've, we've lost this guy because now their attention is going to be focused elsewhere on, on an incoming. So a wise move from the club to stop the meltdown, in my opinion. But yeah, Andreas Huntundre is, I, I think I'm pronouncing that right now, by the way, Andreas Huntundre is officially a Burnley player. Elsewhere, there's not too many rumours doing the rounds at the minute that I've seen reported. 
Um, I not I've mentioned the uh, Czech goalkeeper a couple of days ago. I believe, like I said, there's no real movement on that. I did see a random Twitter account saying with the medicals due, but as far as I'm aware, that's a load of nonsense. Um, Valt Vegost is one that I did see though. I saw it in a Dutch newspaper that at the time of recording this. I have misplaced it, so you might not get a screenshot of, of the article. You'll have to trust me. I saw it yesterday when I was at work. I didn't then save the link, and now I can't find it. But I saw something in, like I said, a, a Dutch newspaper website that basically said Burnley's price is putting off FC20 and Ajax. FC20 did say a few days ago, I think, that it's probably going to be out of their reach, and if a club like Ajax are involved, then he's always going to choose Ajax. So they're, they're not really expecting to get him however even Ajax now are starting to be priced out by what Burnley wants so the article basically was saying that the Eredivisie might be out of reach like Veghorst might be out of reach for clubs in that division because of the asking price that we're asking for I mean I don't know too much about the finances in that league and Ajax have had some issues recently but I can't see he's asking for too much. You know, I think maximum would probably be asking for about eight to ten, and I'd be very, very, very surprised if we get that. But for me, it's it's looking like this one's gonna drag on and drag on. Fingers crossed we can get some money for him and we don't just let him rot. I know some people would think that he probably deserves that. I'd rather, you know, from a business point of view get the money um so i'm, I'm f fingers crossed we, we we do get something sorted and we do shit i mean in a perfect world he'd come in he'd want to play for us all a bit forgiven and he'd score 20 goals in his final season and then we'd wave him off with all the money in the back pocket for the for the premier league tv rights and we won't be too bothered that he's leaving for a free at that point if that is the case but it's looking like this one's going to drag on because FC20 are looking like they can't afford him and Ajax are looking like they can't afford him. And, and like I said, the report in this Dutch newspaper was basically saying that no club in the Eredivisie is going to be able to afford him that wants him. So it might drag on and, and it's going to get to a point where even Veghorst is not just going to sit around wanting to you know, not know about his future. He's, want to go, he's going to want clarity at some point. So even then it might end up him deciding to go somewhere else. And fingers crossed that is the case because like I said, I don't want us to, to just lose out on, on a lot of money. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we'll be back tomorrow on the show as usual. It'll be later on Friday as it always is so I can get Friday's stuff in as well as a lot of Thursdays. Although to be fair, I'm recording this at 3pm on Thursday and nothing has happened yet so far. I've not seen any rumours of anything out there other than a couple of pictures of Jakob Brun Larsson training in some Burnley shorts which... Uh, doesn't really mean anything but yeah we'll be back tomorrow later than usual so if you're looking for the podcast if you're one of the very few that can get the podcast on spotify we are still waiting for it to populate on apple and google again i'll tweet the link when it has so you can subscribe but as usual please let me know what you thought in the comments below please like the video i noticed the likes have gone down a little bit you're probably all just used to watching now and and stuff like that but if you're if you're new here and you haven't subscribed already please do so. We do these every single weekdays as well as debate shows and topic shows I'm going to start doing when I get a chance as well. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, please do and let me know what you think in the comments below.